Hey, it's Mark from Two Dog RC. I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna try and show how to swap out this Fury, or the uh, yeah the Fury F3 board for the Fury F3S board, and put the TBS Unify in there. So first thing I did was I just took all the hardware pieces off, unsoldered my power leads. I connected all the harnesses that were connected under the flight controller, and then what I'm gonna do next, I'm gonna unsolder all the ESCs. And then we'll go to figure out where everything goes. All right, now that I've got the flight control board off, I just have my ESC wires left and this. So let's get the F3S ready to go on. Okay, the first thing I did to get this ready is I put the little gummies in. You just push those in in each hole. And that's going to help take care of any vibration. Okay, so this piece has to go here. And you can see there's a little UFL. So it's going to go just like this. But... You can't do it until you open this covering. So I've got an X-Acto knife. I'm just going to kind of get underneath this shrink, this, uh, shrink wrap here. Okay. All right. There we go. And take all the shrink wrap off. Try not to um, mess with this glue on there because you kind of want that on there. Now, if you look down here, you can see these little pads. Those are going to get soldered right to the pads on the board. Looks like this might have to come off the side a little to make it fit straight. There you go. Yeah, you might have to bend that just a little. But you're not going to have to worry about this connector because it's already connected on the board. Okay, so what I found is tin really doesn't work that good. I just put two little dabs of solder right here and here, and then I pushed this board down and I heated right at that right where the joint is. And what I'm going to do is feed a little bit more solder in there, and that will secure it to the board. And I'm going to do that for all four places: here, 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 big solder glob, and here's a solder glob. All right, so I've got everything soldered. If you look closely. <laughs> The neighborhood children are also looking. This is good educational for the kids to watch. All right, so right here, you can see just got nice solder bridges on these points, this point, and right here. I did turn this around because this is the back of the quad, and the diatom is going to go out the back tail. Okay, so the next thing I did was I soldered my power connector on, and then test fit it. It's going to fit right here. And what we're going to do is we're going to put the little rubber grommets that came in the kit underneath right there and then we're going to put the screws on and set up the ESCs next okay so for the next step I'm figuring out the wires here and this wire and harness came off of the SP3 so this is the wire that goes into the SP3 right here this wire and harness we don't need this anymore because power we don't need to power the VTX it's already on the board the video ends already on the board so Basically, all I did was use an X-Acto knife and lifted up these little plastic pieces to pull out the pins, and we don't need that harness anymore. So what I'm left with on this 10-pin connector is my buzzer and then power, ground, and video for the camera. And that's all we need on this 10-pin connector. And that 10-pin connector goes right here. This pin is for the... ESCs, but we don't need that one. So all we're going to do is plug this in this way and that powers our camera Here's the receiver. We can just plug that right back in and then that one had telemetry So I'm going to plug it into one of these and that's it. So I'm going to put this back together and we'll go from there All right, I've got the everything completed put the parts back on And I've, what I did is the antenna I bent it about 90 degrees so it comes, traces along the side here, bends and comes back here. So there's no hard 90 degree turns, which would be bad. And then I just hot glued it to add some support, but there's nothing that's really going to be pulling on this. If this back piece gets ripped off, you're going to be replacing other things anyway. So it fits in real nice on this ship. Now this is a customer ship that they wanted me to do this for them. And they've got the high stack on here. If you look here, 
This is the high stack. Look how much room there is. That's a good three quarters of an inch. Uh, if you wanted to, leave it like this. Provide additional airflow through there for cooling. That might be a good idea. But I don't think you have any problems on the short stack either. So that's what it looks like. If you got any questions, you can get contact us at 2dogrc.com. We do custom builds as well. So if you need help doing this, this project took me maybe two hours. I take I'm, I'm I take my time and I try to make all my solder joints look good and and then I also had to figure out the ports again for the receiver. So it took me maybe a little longer than normal, but you could probably do it in an hour and a half. But if you plan two hours, you're good. Also, what I did do is I did put a 1000 UF 35 volt cap. Uh, to the power leads here. I, I always put caps on all my builds and then I just uh, taped it to the side here. I should keep it out of the prop. But this helps with power fluctuations from the ESCs and keeping all the power nice on the board.